Hello, this is a tutorial on using a new tool, or actually a tool that's been inside Blackboard for a bit, but it's the latest and greatest version. It's the new version of Blackboard Collaborate called Blackboard Collaborate Ultra. Similar to any other type of screencasting or video conferencing tool like a WebEx or Google Hangout, this is a tool built into Blackboard, and we're going to just give you a brief uh, overview and this is something that does have a monthly update, so things will be changing. So after you watch this, uh, pay attention periodically. There will be a different, uh, additional updates, different uh, features they're adding on. Sometimes it increases the feature list. Other times, uh, other times it just improves the uh, functionality, maybe the speed of something. So there's uh, basically what you will do to launch us. There's different places for students and for faculty. A faculty will launch, or one way they can get access to it is through course tools, and then there's Blackboard Collaborate and Collaborate Ultra that will be listed in the class. Collaborate is what we have had uh, for probably at least the last year, if not a little longer for some people piloting it, and Blackboard Collaborate is going to be turned on in summer of 2017 for all courses and communities. Students are going to get access to the tool or can get access to the tool through student tools. Again, notice that there's a Blackboard Collaborate link and a Blackboard Collaborate Ultra link. So uh, there, uh, Ultra is what we're training on. Ultra is what's going to be used. So obviously just make sure uh, everybody goes that way and uh, uses the appropriate link. Now there's a couple of other ways and we'll talk about them that people can get access to a Blackboard Collaborate session. And so we'll go ahead and get started. So I'm going to go ahead as the faculty person and I'm going to launch the Blackboard Collaborate Ultra screen. And if you've used Collaborate Traditional before, you're going to see some similarities along with some differences. But I'm going to walk through everything and then I'm going to have a fictitious student join us so we can see how it works. So basically, this is your stage. You have two different places to create a session and one place to join a room along with some various other little things and we'll kind of talk about those. Now depending on what you're going to want to do with your session, if you believe that what you want to do is record the session, this can be a live session and maybe you have no intention of recording it, but if you think that you want to record the session, one of the first things you're going to want to do is go over here to this little snowman laying on its side this is course room options and you click on that and edit settings. Now copy guest link, just to pause here for a second, whoops, move my mouse. That copy guest link, I had said earlier that there's different ways that, that you can give participants access. If you wanted to use this with your class but had a guest speaker or someone that was not Baker related, um, inside your Blackboard shell, this link here you can grab and you can send it to that person in an email and they would be able to join into your Collaborate session. But for right now, I want to go into Edit Settings. And here again is this link that I just talked about. That guest role is listed as participant. That means anybody who's coming in as a guest with this guest link is going to default to the participant. That's what everybody is going to be. Then there's some settings down here that we just want to take a look at. Now, I generally don't touch anything. I leave everything alone down here. And when you first get in here, you will find it actually like this. If you're going to want to record and archive any session that you're going to have, whether or not you decide to record every session or not, it's always a good idea to come into your settings and fix this. Make it to be the way that you want it. I always leave mine on Allow Recording Downloads, even if that's not something I, I want to do. What that means, and this is something that's different from Collaborate Traditional, is in the past, if, if you actually recorded a session, it would be stuck in that particular course. The only way you could get it out is to share it with another course that you happen to be the teacher of. Then after a year, they would all disappear. You had no ability to take it and move it somewhere so that you can use it later down the road. This new version, Blackboard Collaborate Ultra, allows you to download a recorded session, and then you can do whatever you wanted with it. You could download it to your machine. You could put it in Google Drive. 
you could actually put it in your YouTube account and then get embed code and do anything that you needed to post it on a blog, a website, what have you. So this is one of the first things I do is I allow recorded downloads. And I hit save. Okay, so now I just want to talk about the differences basically of these two buttons. Create sessions. It's the same thing in two different places. And join room. Create sessions would be if I wanted to schedule something down the road. So I can give it a name, I can put a title in here, I can give it some details, uh, start time and end time as far as dates and times, or I can say it's, it's open-ended. I might do that maybe for the tutoring session or something along those lines. Usually I just leave everything else alone and I'm just setting the start date and end date is usually the same date and then the time. So basically the default is for an hour. If that's not something you wanted, you could adjust the starting time and the ending time. You can um, adjust whether or not you want anybody to be able to get in, your participants, early or not. And then how early can they actually get into the session. Here's where you can add that description. So whatever I'm going to set here, I'm either canceling out or I'm saving. If I made any changes, I didn't make any changes. So this create session and this create session is the same thing. Over here we're going to go into join room if we wanted to start a session right now or get something ready for a class that's going to start in 10-15 minutes or something like that. So this is a session that I haven't already pre-set up to roll. I'm joining the session right now. So this is what the screen looks like. This is our welcome screen once we've joined a session. I'm going to point out uh, three different toolbar areas. First, down the middle, there is an image here if you have filled out the profile in my settings and uploaded a picture, there will be a picture for yourself located here. If not, you will just have a silhouette of a person. This is the audio, which is you turning on and off your microphone. Obviously, in a session with a lot of people, just like if you've ever participated in a WebEx, uh, you may want to instruct people to keep the microphone off until you're going to grant somebody the ability to talk. You also have sharing video. So if you share the video, notice that my image has shown up right down here in the bottom, just so I can see what it is that I'm actually recording on the video. If uh, I was on the recipient side, in other words, a participant, this image here would be full screen. This would be what they're seeing as I would be the one doing the presentation. And then the last item here is just a person. As you notice, when you hover the mouse, it says raise hand. So if you wanted to raise your hand virtually in the classroom so that the instructor would get an indication that somebody has a question, they could see who the question uh, belongs to, and then maybe go ahead and tell that person to take their mic uh, mute off and ask the question or to type it into the chat box. So saying that, Let's go over and look at another one of the toolbars here, which is the Open Collaborate Panel area. So this is our Collaborate Panel. There's four choices of things that you have here. Settings we've already talked about. You're not really going to go into that at this point unless you're going to change something along the way. It defaults to the chat, so you have the ability to see who I'm chatting with and changing that. You have the participants list. So right now I'm listed as the moderator. I'm the only one in the session. And you can see this number one here. If I if I actually get rid of this uh, or go to either get rid of it by clicking on the X or go back, you can see that I have this one here. So if a new person comes into this room, if I know I have 15 people in my session, then it should say 16, myself plus the 15. Okay, So I can click there to see who those people are. And when I add somebody in, we're going to go back there again in a minute. Then there's share content. So here's some other things that are new. The secondary content, the ability to instantly pop a poll up right in your session and poll your students for something, that is new to Ultra. The other thing that's new to Ultra is this breakout groups. Prior to uh, Blackboard Ultra, uh, they didn't really have breakout groups squared away. They were piloting a little bit in the traditional form, but there were some bugs. It didn't really work real seamlessly. This works actually pretty good. You can create groups, you can have uh, either a, a 
selection by the instructor of who's going to be in each group, or you can have, you can swap students out of groups, students can join groups, a lot of different ways that you can, you can do that. More of an advanced feature, both the polling and the breakout groups, so something to explore and play around with. There'll probably be some tutorials on some of these more intermediate and advanced features going down the road. But this is really the power of the Blackboard Collaborate Ultra Session. You have the ability to share a blank whiteboard, you have the ability to share applications and the ability to share files. And we'll go into those in a second. I do want to just for a second here talk about the very last thing that is kind of new in the Blackboard Ultra compared to the traditional. I had said that both of them have the ability for you to do a recording and archive uh, the, the sessions. In past, the traditional version, you could archive it and it had to stay in your Blackboard class where you did the recording. You could share it with other classes that you were listed as the instructor with, but then that was it. In the new version, you had the ability to download and then you could do a lot of things with it. You would either have the, the um, file itself or you could actually upload the thing into Google Drive or into your YouTube account and then do other things with it from there. One of the nice benefits of the new Collaborate Ultra is it used to take 60 minutes, one hour, before something that you recorded was visible back in that sessions area where you had a list of your recordings. In the current version, the Ultra version, it takes about five minutes, five to seven minutes. So that's a lot better if you're like me and you do a recording and you want to check it out before you release it to people or before you save it and determine that that's your finished project because you might want to re-record it if it didn't work the way you wanted to. And in the past, I would have to wait an hour to see if that happened. So share blank whiteboard. Let's go into this share content. So what this is going to mean is that every time I do something, the other person uh, or persons in the room, in my virtual room, will be able to see that. Uh, before I do that, though, I'm going to come over to another computer and I'm going to log in as a test or a practice student to this, uh, to this session. So notice down here you will see the number change to 2. Once that person joins, and their name will show up and they will be listed as a participant as soon as they get in. So notice we see Barbara Student is joining. Barbara Student is now in the class, and there we can see our number has advanced to two. Okay, so if Barbara Student wanted to raise her hand, you can see that at 1.38, Barbara Student raised her hand. So I can uh, lower the hand for that student. The student can do it themselves, or I can X out. Probably a good idea to either X out or have the student load it once you've addressed the question. Otherwise, um, you know, you could have a whole bunch of these going on with some questions and you probably want to keep that all squared away. So um, that student has uh, now lowered their raised hand. And so now we're going to move on. So let's go back to the shared area again. And so the share blank whiteboard. Now you might find some use for this. I don't know that you're going to find a lot of it. You do have some tools. I'm not really good at drawing with the mouse. So I mean, I can grab this pencil and you know, I can write, but if you had a um, some type of a tablet, it's not even recognizing you, period. There you go. So that's a little bit more difficult. You know, cursive is not that much better. I mean, it's not terrible, but uh, if I had, uh, you know, a drawing tablet and a stylus, that might be a little bit easier. But you have the ability to uh, maybe have something on here. Maybe it's an image or something. You would still get access to these tools. This is a selection tool which allows you to pick up something and move it to a different location. The pointer tool, if I'm doing a demonstration, they're not going to see my mouse move on the other side. But if I have this little pointer, they can see exactly where I'm moving to. The pencil, you click on the pencil, you got different colors that you can play with. These are shapes. If I wanted to do something with a shape, it's just kind of a click and drag, place it where you want to. Text box, this actually allows me to type. Again, I can adjust the color. 
of what I want the text to be. There's my colors. And then the eraser is a clear all, so remember that now. And if you give the students a presenter role, which we'll talk about in a minute, they're not going to have the clear all just because that would wipe out everything on the screen and that might not be something that you're doing in some type of a group project or a project where you're trying to capture everything or add on to what's on the, the screen. So that's sharing the blank whiteboard application. But because you do have the ability uh, on other things that I'm going to show you later to use these tools, I do want to show you this. Then there's the share application. Now, Share Application is a very, very powerful tool because it's going to allow you to share everything that you have on the computer screen or just an application, which is normally what I do. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to have that other, let's say I got a website here. So I've just clicked on the website. It's another tab that I have open or another window, and I'm going to highlight that to say that that's the application that I want to share. And then let's move this in here so you get to see the whole thing. So then I'm going to come down here and hit share. So the the desktop, this is something that shows up on the bottom of your screen. Desktop sharing is sharing a window. Okay, and so if I want to stop sharing that, I would hit the stop or I'd hit hide. I usually don't like the hide. It doesn't take up a lot of space, but sometimes I forget where I'm at and, and what I'm doing. So if I was going to do something with this particular site, say I wanted to click on a link or I wanted to play a video, all of this is going to show. And if I'm recording, all of this is going to record. Okay. So um, one of the things that I'm going to want to do is I don't want to close out of this window where you'll get something that's called tunnel vision. Okay. Kind of messy. What you want to do is you want to hit stop sharing first. That's going to take you back to the home screen and if I wanted to go back to any of those things that I was either sharing that CNBC website again or whatever it is I'm going to do or if I'm not uh, if this is the participant screen that we're staring at they would just be seeing my face in this area because I do have my webcam on as you can see down here so then there's share files so share files allows you to add different types of files that you might want to use for teaching, training, demonstration, presentation, what have you. However, notice that you can have an image, so that's something like a JPEG or a PNG file or so forth, bitmap. You can have a PowerPoint or you can have PDFs. So if you think about it, these are all just various types of images. The PowerPoint allows you to play through the PowerPoint slides and then you know in the image it's just static, it's flat and so forth. But let me show you, I have a couple of things loaded in here. I have one image and one PowerPoint. So if I wanted to share this uh, image, and then I can hit share now. And so here's the image now. The people on the far side, the people who are participating in this uh, video collaboration, they're now seeing this just as I have here. And again, I now have my toolbar up here. So if I wanted to highlight something, point something out specifically and say, you know, here's the clear everything button. This is what we're going to want to hit on the calculator before we start making our, our problem calculations. I can say this is the number that we should all get when we tabulate, what have you. So you might be able to use that in various types of, uh, you know, maybe English papers where you want to demonstrate something, various math applications and so forth. Again, limited usage. You have to figure out whether or not there's some, some value there. So that's something to consider. Uh, however, what I have found, uh, one of the things uh, also, let me stop sharing here. Let me go back to this spot. Again, PowerPoint image PDF files. So notice things like Excel spreadsheets and Word documents. Those aren't anything that you can share. And you'll figure that out because if you go to add files and you go into your My Documents or File Explorer on a Windows machine, you'll notice that those items are grayed out because they're not the file types that could come right in here. However, one of the things that you'll discover is if you already have those things open on, on your machine, sometimes it's figuring out ways around what you actually want to do. If you already have those, uh, those uh, items, those documents or whatever they are open already on your machine, you can go back into the share application and hit just an application. And I happen to have this ACE assignment grading item. Uh, open on my machine, so any any document that you have open, then I can just hit share, 
and would pop it up for me to demonstrate the same way. Again, this would be for things like Word, Excel, anything that is not a PDF, an image, or a PowerPoint. Now, one of the things that I do have to point out is this is a static document. Okay, so you can't be changing things that are on here. Basically, this thing just took a snapshot and loaded this document into your space. That being said, if the purpose for doing this is to work collaboratively, whether it's the instructor and a student or students, or a number of students in the class, if you want to tag team a particular project, the easiest way to do this is to put whatever the item or items are into Google Drive and share that with the people that need to have access because then it is editable and this is a live uh, changing or modification of what's going on in the space. Okay? All right, so that's pretty much all the sharing and all those particular types of pieces. I do want to come back to this spot um, and let me pull up the participant panel here. Notice that we have Barb student as the only other person and myself. One of the things that I think is really nice, it works really well, is you have to make a determination. Are, are you going to need a bunch of people with webcams or just the audio component and then the screen sharing aspect? Because you have the ability to check the network connection for the far side. So if I had a bunch of students, I could come over here and hover my mouse and this little symbol is going to pop up and it's going to tell you, in this case, network connection is great. It could say is good, it could say is average, it could say is poor. The nice thing about that is if you have a student who has a connection that you check and you see it doesn't have these four little half circles on it, um, it has less than that, what you might want to do is tell them to not have their webcam on and just do the audio in the screen because that's, that's a way that's not going to kick them off and they'll keep connection. They just don't have that great of an internet connection. The other thing that we have the ability to do, and this might be something you might want to consider, is you can have, you can make somebody the moderator, you can make them the presenter, you can make them the captioner, or you can remove them from the session. So removing from the session, probably not a lot of uses for that. If you got a little group thing going, and then as you're working individually with everybody in the group, you want to let them go one at a time because you're done with them and there's no reason for them to sit around on the, on the session any longer, you, that would be a way to do it. Make moderator is probably something you're not going to want to do. You're going to want to remain the moderator yourself. This is like giving them the keys to Hogwarts. You're giving them access to everything, which means they can remove people, they can close down the entire session, and you're just left going, what the heck's going on? If there's a reason why you would want somebody to show something on their screen to everybody else that's in the Collaborate session, you can make them the presenter. And then it's kind of like giving them the ball. They can show a PowerPoint or an image or a document or a web link or something that they have on their machine, and everybody else participating can see it. Uh, don't forget to uh, share with them the concept of making sure you don't get that tunnel vision. So when you are sharing something, you want to make sure that they actually close that document um, uh, out. You know, the, there's the stop sharing piece before you close the document out. If you close the document out ahead of time, you're going to get that tunnel vision. And then this make captioner. There might be a reason why you want a note taker. Um, or a captioner, and that would be where you could give the person that particular privilege. Okay, so if I wanted to change Barb's student's role, notice now Barb is the participant, I would just come here and I could make Barb the presenter. Now it's changed on her machine, we have Barb's student as the presenter, and Barb is actually the one that is going to be putting various things uh, on Barb's screen, and then the rest of us, the rest of us will get to see what Barb, uh, what Barb is doing and what she's sharing with the group. So let's see, we get Barb to, to share a file here. So this is the same files that were in the account, but Barb is now going to share uh, a PowerPoint. And so you can see here, Barb is actually sharing this. This is the first slide in the PowerPoint presentation. And as Barb uh, does her presentation, Barb can then advance to the next slide, the next slide, you know, and, and throughout the presentation, going back and forth, moving down here, um, 
Barb has access to the same little forward and reverse arrows that I as the faculty do. And the reason that I still have it is, remember, I'm the moderator, so I'm the highest level or the highest role in the class. If I give somebody else the moderator and move myself down to something else, I can no longer have control of the class. So another good reason to do that. So I'm going to go back in and I'm going to take the controls back by making Barb a participant. Okay. And uh, we're going to stop sharing the screen. So I do want to talk about one additional thing in this first part of Blackboard Collaborate Ultra demonstration, and that is the ability to capture things. So if I go up here into this other toolbar here, open the session window, uh, start recording. This is that spot that I'm going to want to come and click right at the beginning of a session if I feel like I want to record everything that's going to happen. Now just so you know it doesn't record uh, individual group so if you've got the groups going on it's not going to record all that. It will record your chat and will record anything that you pull up on the screen, any of your screen sharing and any of the video and audio that gets captured. We'll record that. It is possible, just to show you this, where you can use a phone for an audio. So sometimes a student with a poor connection will go, come on and access the session on their computer, but then rather than using like a, a headset mic or the, the microphone inside their laptop, they can actually uh, connect for audio with their uh, smartphone. And then some other things here, we're really not going to do that. But I do want to point out two things, the start recording and the leave session. Very, very important. If you are going to record, you cannot leave the session until you have started. And then once I press start, stopped recording. Very, very critical. You must stop the recording before you leave the session. Failure to do that, and you will find that you recorded nothing. It was a complete waste of time. So very important to pay attention to that. So all I would have to do is go ahead and start recording. It's telling me that a session is now being recorded. So everything I'm saying, anything I'm, any visual thing, if I have a video going, and anything that I'm going to pull up on the screen with the sharing along with my participants panel and so forth. Notice that uh, I now have the little red dot here inside my little webcam image, which is showing me that I have a recording in progress. So I can do everything that I would normally do. I could go to do those sharing pieces that I was that I was talking about before, sharing the application, you know, what whatever it is I'm going to do, I can share the files and pull up my image. And that's all going to be recorded. Any drawing that I do on it is going to be recorded, that kind of thing. So I'm going to stop sharing. So let's say I've made my entire recording. It's been a half hour. It's been an hour. Whatever the time frame is uh, that rec represents the what exactly that I want to capture and the time that I need to capture that. I'm now going to go back to this drop-down menu. And notice I have to change it from stop recording. So I'm going to click. And it's going to say the recording has stopped. Once this disappears, which takes about five seconds, I can now go back and I can say leave session. You do not want to hit leave session until you've started and stopped the recording. So this is Blackboard Collaborate Ultra, part one. I hope to have some other features as uh, the software itself adapts, changes, adds some additional components, and uh, we'll be doing that in the future. Thanks. And that's all there is to it. Uh, at this point, you don't have to fill this stuff in. Uh, you can if you want, or you can just go ahead and skip it. I usually fill it in because it's kind of like a quality improvement for them. It says, thanks for helping us make Blackboard better. You've left the session and can close your browser. So, you know, we're basically done at this particular point, and that's the session. So Blackboard Collaborate Ultra, part one. Thanks.